Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day today. Welcome to Seattle Hana Church's first service. It's an English service. So we want to welcome all our church members and all our friends and brothers and sisters that are visiting today's worship. Uh, we want to ask you to let's just join in in celebrating who we are in Christ Jesus. It's the first day of November. Wow, 2020 is, uh, is almost done. So as we come together, we always have to remember that we are, we are on a journey. Uh, in fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today, uh, a journey into the likeness of Jesus. So thank you. Thank you for joining us in this journey. Let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus. Just want to meditate upon who you are, Lord, right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, we ask that our that our soul, that our heart, that everything that we are, Lord Jesus, will cry out, "Praise the Lord." And that's how King David approached you. That let everything within me praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful way to start, to begin this time of worship, Lord Jesus. Because that's our life, Lord, Father God. That's the journey that we are on. Lord, as we begin this time of worship, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray that your spirit will powerfully, powerfully be upon us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for who you are, Lord, Father God. We thank you for your grace, your peace, the mercy that you give to us every day, Lord Jesus. It is new every morning, Lord, Father God. We are grateful. Lord, we lift up our congregation into your hands and any brothers or sisters that have joined this time of worship, Lord. And Lord, I pray that as we come, Lord Father, that you will be glorified, Lord Jesus. Although we are not able to come together as a body, Lord Father God, to worship you here, Lord, wherever we are, Lord Father God, we stand in holy ground because we are holy people. So, Lord Jesus, wherever we are right now, Lord, I pray that we'll take off our sandals. That we bow down before you, Lord Jesus, in the place that we are in right now. That we will acknowledge you, that we will glorify you, that we will worship you, Lord Jesus, in spirit and in truth. You are God. You are the Savior. You are the Lord. You are the King. And for that, we are grateful, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love that is unconditional. Thank you for giving us strength in times of need. Thank you for healing that you bring, Lord Jesus, in our body, in our spirit, Lord Father God, and in our mind. We thank you in your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us once again. I hope uh, that you had a wonderful night, an extra hour of sleep. I enjoyed it. Um, Today, we're going to look at Joshua. Now, we've been looking kind of uh, in the first Peter and all the New Testament. But now, let's gonna flip over to the Old Testament. We're going to look at Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. So, wherever you are, please stand. As we... Hear the, the word of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am going to I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. 
from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> when was the last time you were on a journey? Uh, what kind of journey have you gone? Um, and what journey was the most enjoyable to you? The, 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 um, the fun journeys that we've been on is probably because of location. Or maybe it was because who you were with, who you went, with, went to on this journey. Also, the journey could be enjoyable in, uh, in what you ate, what you saw. You know, there's so, we, we are this destination that shows nature. Um, maybe you like the city. And we live in Seattle where we have everything here. The, the, the seas, the mountains, the rivers. But wherever we travel... Now, wherever we journey, we, we learn something, something from that journey. Now, some people are just homebodies. I know they don't enjoy traveling. They don't like the hassle of packing, uh, driving, flying. You know, they don't want the hassle of using other people's bathrooms. <laughs> some people just are comfortable in their own bathrooms at home. Um, you know, some people are excited to travel. I I, on the other hand, I love traveling. You know, last week we talked about traveling. We talked about going. You know, we raised our hand saying, here I am, Lord, send me. And God will send us on a journey. Now, this journey that we are on, it could be a physical journey. Going to a wonderful, beautiful destination. But also, we are also in a journey spiritually. That one of the most helpful way of thinking Christianity, the life of Christian, is, is that seeing it as a journey. As believers, we should always be progressing on a spiritual journey, moving forward in a spiritual journey. And we talk about spiritual formation, discipleship, transformation, holiness sanctification, and all these are actually a journey. Journey toward being like Christ Jesus. And if you ride a bicycle, in order for you to ride a bicycle uphill, you have to keep pedaling. And you keep on pedaling so that you keep the balance so that you don't fall. See, Christianity, spiritual maturity is like a journey. It's an uphill journey. Now, it's easy to coast downhill without paddling. But you can't coast uphill. You have, to keep you have to keep paddling. Our Christian life is an upward journey toward the prize, Apostle Paul said. See, our faith is a Christian maturity. It's growing in Christ Jesus and we need an upward toward, the, uh, it's an upward momentum of transformation, growth, and maturity. 
And today we're going to talk about spiritual maturity, the journey that we are on, the spiritual journey that we are on. That as we keep pedaling, you know, God will lead us to our destination. Today's text is where the second generation of Israelites, the first generation, they came out of Egypt and they're going to the promised land. The first generation never reached the promised land. Only of the first generation, only Caleb and Joshua remained. And then it's the second generation of the, of the, the exodus that they are going into the promised land. And that's the scene that we are on. Now it's Joshua's task. Joshua is leading the Israelites into the promised land. See, Moses' journey, the whole 40 years in the desert, Moses pretty much fought with, with the Israelites. You know, they were complaining, they were grumbling, they were fighting amongst themselves. They're stiff-necked, disobedient people. Now, have you ever been on a journey with these people, the people like that? You know, they, they complain about everything. They complain about it. it's too hot, it's too cold. And there's no water. There's no meat. I've been I've I've <laughs> I've been on trips, uh, journeys uh, with people like that, especially on a mission trip. And a mission trip is tough. Uh, there's no water. There's no bathroom. You have to do it your business out in the woods. And you know when you're out in the mission field, or when you're out in the world, complaining doesn't work. So Moses, his journey into the wilderness was just to just to lead this grumbling people into the promised land. And ultimately, they were not able to go into the promised land. But Joshua now, Joshua also is going to go on a journey. God is taking Joshua through <clears throat> into the promised land, and his journey will be a journey of battling. There's other people, other nations in the promised land, and Joshua has to fight them. See, spiritual maturity is, is uh, it's not automatic. It takes place in the world. Spiritual maturity really is shown, it's proven out in the world. And then we can come as a, as a church. We can come together during, we can't do it, na we can't do it now, but you know, when we are able to come, we have worship service in the church. You know, we can, we can act really mature. But the real maturity, the faith of a mature person is proven in the world. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's about spiritual, spiritual maturity that takes place in the world. How? How are we able to possess the land? First, first is to, the first thing that we need to understand, in order for us to grow in Christ Jesus, the order, the order for us to grow in Christ likeness is to bury the past. In first verse that we read, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And what did God say? Moses my servant is dead. See, holding on the past keeps us moving forward. Holding on the past, it weighs us down to continue the journey. After the death of Moses, God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. See, the first generation, all these people who are grumbling, they died. They're buried in the desert. All but Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses is dead. The first step in spiritual maturity is that the old is gone. The old, our mistakes, our, our disobedience, our unbelief has to die. It's dead. Our pride, dead. 
We have to declare these things then. Because the enemy wants you to hold on to these things because you did this. You were disobedient. You made the mistake. So this belongs to you. But in order for us to grow spiritually is to declare it dead. Demand it. And also dismiss it. Fear is dead. Failure is dead. Even my success is dead. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if you are in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. See, that's the beginning of spiritual maturity. Even our success, we want to hold on to our success and say, oh, this is what I did last year. But God is saying, you have to bury that. Why? Because there's new things that's, that's taking place. In Joshua chapter 1, the, the, the verse previous, in Deuteronomy, the end of Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, God talks about how who Moses was. It says, and there has not risen a prophet since in Israel like Moses. So God is honoring Moses. In fact, Moses is writing this down. And God is saying, you know, all the power that you see, all the things, all the Red Sea, and the manna, the, uh, the pillars of fire, the pillars of cloud, all those things. All those things were done through Moses. And then Joshua chapter 1. The first thing that God mentions. Oh, by the way, that great Moses is dead. See, we need to bury the past. We grow from it. We learn from it. Our mistakes, our successes, but it's gone. We have to bury it. What needs to die? What do we need to bury in our lives? Maybe it was unjust. You know, maybe you felt unjust. Maybe you were rejected. You know, maybe there were gossips around uh, about you. All those things has to die. Isaiah. Chapter 43, verse 18 through 19. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I would make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now this is Isaiah writing about the journey of Exodus, saying, God saying the same thing. Moses is dead. You, you went across the Red Sea. It's done. It's past. There's a new thing coming, even greater things that are coming. See, spiritual maturity is hoping in God working in you. It is burying the past and expecting a new thing of God. Spiritual maturity begins when you bury the dead. Declare it dead. But then also expect the new. Expect the new. And that's the second point. The second point is spiritual maturity takes place. is to receive the challenge. To receive the new thing. Expect it. Long for it. And when, sits, when, when God reveals it, you take up the challenge. It says, arise. You know, God says, arise. Go. In verse, 20, in verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. There is a challenge. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. You and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. So, the, so 
you know, stand firm. Then we talked about First Peter. It says, prepare your mind for action. Action for the new thing. Don't hold on to the past. Expect the new thing. Expect the transformation. We don't want to turn around and, and coast downhill. We want to keep, stay the course, arise, stand firm, and keep pedaling. Why? Because God has new destinations for us, new things. You know, there's a reason why people backslide. You know, young people, after they come, they, they uh, graduate high school, a lot of them leave the church. A lot of us, we also backslide. And the reason why people leave the church, especially the young people, is because th their faith was not a, a personal faith. Faith wasn't just, it wasn't a personally meaningful to them. It was something that parents took them. It was something that the parents told them to do. They did not have the first-hand experience of God. The first-hand experience of who God is. And I talked with Lauren Cunningham, who was the founder of YWAM, a long time ago. And, you know, God did an incredible thing through him and his, through his organization. Um, and I asked him, how do you challenge young people? How do you encourage young people to follow Jesus? You know, I was expecting uh, him to say, well, you know, you have to nurture them. You know, you have to kind of uh, help them and love on them. But he said something really, uh, uh, really shocking. He said, well, you, let them know why, what they will be losing. I said, what? Okay, what? What do you mean? Yeah, challenge them. Instead of sugarcoating them, instead of saying, okay, if you do this, if you believe in Jesus, everything will be great. You'll get good grades. No, tell them. Challenge them. Challenge them that you will lose your popularity. You will lose your acceptance. You will lose your value. You will lose the world. But you will gain Jesus. You will gain Jesus. So we need to gain Jesus. And that means that we need to go on a journey. And we have to experience Jesus. Challenge them. Hand experience. Let them find out. Don't, we don't, we don't want to force feed them, but we want to lead them, right? And allow them to experience Jesus. The crossing the Red Sea the first generation had to cross the Red Sea because the Roman soldiers were behind them. So they crossed the sea because they wanted to live. They were afraid of the Roman soldiers. They wanted to live, and so they walked forward. Of course, God's hand was on it. Now, the crossing the Jordan River in this scene, nobody is attacking them. Nobody's trying to kill them, but... It's only God telling them, okay, I want you to move forward. See, in order for us to grow spiritually, uh, we need to hear God's words. Uh, and there needs to be a personal, intimate voice of the Lord that is leading us to keep pedaling, to know Jesus. Spiritual maturity is not done by force. It is not done by uh, outside influence. It is done through just experiencing Jesus. It is spiritual maturity. It's not done by selfish reasons, but an inward desire to experience God in the unknown. And the third point, how? How do we possess the promised land? How do we grow spiritually? Third is that know that God is committed to you. God is committed to you. God is committed 
for you to grow and be like him. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. See, God is committed to you because he is our God. Joshua accepted this challenge. Joshua was able to arise and go over to Jordan because he knew that God was committed. That God was committed to him. And how, how has God committed himself to us? How has God committed himself to Joshua and to the Israelite people? Well, he committed, God committed to you through his promise. In verse 3 of today's text, it says, Every place that your soul, that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. You know, we just read in Philippians that God, Jesus, began a good work and he's committed to fulfill it. And also God is committed to you through his presence. In verse 5, it says, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Amen? I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. And in verse 9, it says, Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. That shows commitment. So God is committed to you for your spiritual maturity through his promises, through his presence. And then third, he is committed to your spiritual maturity through power. Power. Isaiah 41. Isaiah, this is a wonderful verse. Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. What a promise. <laughs> what a presence and what a power. You know, Moses is going, uh, uh, Moses, like I said earlier, fought with them, with his people, with, uh, with Israelites. Joshua, now he's fighting battles. He's going to go into this place where there's giants and and, you know, he, want, he should have gotten some, some uh, powerful weapons, some new weapons, you know. I would have asked, if I was Joshua, I would have said, God, you know, if you want me to do this, I will get up, I will rise, I will take the challenge, but I want you to, you know, give me some good weapons. Or how about some battle strategies, you know. Okay, how do I fight against these people? Later on, God did give him strategies. You know, just go around the, te uh, the, the walls seven times. And then, but God said, no. God said just to do one thing. Spiritual maturity takes place when we meditate and obey God's word. Simple. And we talk about this every Sunday. We have to remind ourselves every Sunday because we also like to grumble. We are also stiff-necked people. But we need to keep pedaling. It's an upward, uphill climb. If you stop pedaling, you will lose balance and you will stumble. So pedaling is meditating. Pedaling is obeying God's word. The only way spiritual maturity is through the renewing of your mind through the living word of God. See, God demands complete obedience not just 50 percent not just 90 percent not even 99 percent god demands god commands 100 percent a complete obedience god says do all that is written not just the ones that you like which is which is what i do right which we all do he's like oh i want to do this i want to do this this i don't think so i will just wait now god says Spiritual maturity 
is through renewing of your mind in all the Word. God demands complete obedience and consistent diligence to His Word. Complete obedience and consistent diligence, which means that you just keep on pedaling. In verse 7, 8 of today's text, God says, Careful to do according to all the laws. Do not turn from it, from to the right or to the left. Don't decide on which one to obey. Let the word shall not, these words shall not depart from your mouth. What does that mean? Then we speak the word of God. We eat the word of God. And do according to all that is written. See, promised land. You know, Joshua is going into the promised land to overtake it, to seize it. The promised land was an unconditional promise. God said, this is, there's a place in Canaan. All right, there's a milk and, milk and honey flows. That's yours. The promised land was an unconditional promise to God, but possessing the land, the possessing the land was conditional. We live in the world. You know, this world belongs to God, but the enemy has it. Enemy has strongholds. That's why I've called you. That's because that's why God saved us, so that we can take back the land that we've lost. So God is committed to our spiritual maturity by possessing, possessing the world for God. Which means we have to have a change of heart, change of attitude. We take back the promised land. We take back the land by loving others. Serving others. Forgiving. Serving humbly. See, these are the things. These are the promised land that we need to conquer. And God is committed to that. And so, we should also be committed to it. Spiritual maturity is our journey into the promised land. God is committed to our maturity with his promises, with his presence, and with his power. Therefore, God says to do one thing, which is be strong and courageous. See, Moses, before he died, also mentioned to Joshua, Joshua, I'm going to die, but you're going to do this, so... Be strong and courageous. Uh, there's this, uh, um, there's this uh, place down in uh, Oregon, and I think there's uh, other places here in, in, in uh, Seattle. Uh, I call them, they call them ropes course, where it's like a high, uh, you, you go, you, it's on a, uh, it's up, up on a treetop, right? And they have different ropes all tied, and you have to navigate, and you have to go from one tree to another, and you have to navigate. Uh, it's it's kind of up high, and uh, it's about about thirty feet up, above the ground. And there's a zip line and all that, and that's fun. So I went to one of these ropes courses, and it's for supposed to be like uh, building, okay, and also to overcome your fears of height and and all that stuff. Now, this was a long time ago, so I was pretty, pretty confident. Uh, Tim, John, my two sons were also with us, and we had other, uh, our, our, our staff was with us. So it was a, a time of just coming together, team building, unity, also um, overcoming your fears. So there were different activities, and they're all in the high places up on a tree. And I did okay. I don't think I had a fear of height, you know, and... I, like I said, I was pretty confident. But there's one activity that we had to do. One activity. Now, we were all completely safe. All the harnesses, all the straps were strapped in. We're all, uh, so we had a helmet and all that. So everything was pretty, very, very safe. And that was, you know, that was the most important thing. There was one activity that we had to do. 
And this activity was that there was this pole about the size of about that round, like a, like a telephone pole. And it was about, uh, I don't know, about 20 feet to the top, right? And, and the activity was that we have to climb up this pole, right? Just like the uh, uh, telephone pole. And we had to, now there's nothing around, just this pole. And you have to climb up and you have to step on top at the very end. So imagine this is the pole right here and you climb up and then you have to kind of push your way up and stand on top of this pole. Simple enough. You know, I was looking at it and I'll go, oh, that's so easy. And all the other guys, and Tim and John, you know, they were going, oh, that's so easy. And they did it with the blink of an eye. They're climbing, they're climbing and they're stepping. They, they step up to the top and they're standing. And after you stand, you have to just leap. Leap, just, just leap and touch this big round ball that is about a few feet away. You're all attached. You know, you look at all these uh, super, uh, superhero movies, Marvel and all that stuff, and they, you see these and how they do it, and they're all strapped in, they swing back and forth. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy and pretty simple. So that was the activity. So I so all the other people then, and I'm looking, oh, I could do it, I could do it. So I get, it's my, it's my turn. So I'm climbing. I'm going, oh, this is so easy. I'm climbing, I'm climbing. I'm going, and I get to the top, and this pole starts swinging back and forth. See, when you're down, you don't really notice it. But when you're up there, when you are the one that's holding on top of this pole, the, the pole starts swinging, and all of a sudden, fear. I just froze. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I tried to overcome this just complete sense of fear. I couldn't move. And people were trying to encourage me. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't look down. And so I was trying to ignore all this thing. And nothing helped. Except one thing. By the grace of God, I began to just kind of uh, look at the, the, the harness that I was wearing. The vest. You know, the, all the ropes and all the harness that, that, were, that, was, uh, that I was wearing and the rope that was connected to me. I kept on looking at that. I'm kept on saying, okay, you are safe. This is, this is safe. The harness will protect you. The rope will keep you. You're not going to fall. And, 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 and when I began to kind of focus on that, fear started to kind of uh, disappear. And so I took courage <laughs> and I was able to stand up. Still, I was still pretty nervous, but I was able to do it. And all that time, I kept on thinking, I am safe. You see, Jesus, God wants us to grow. And sometimes we're afraid. Sometimes we don't want to grow that much, or sometimes when we are uh, when we don't know what's ahead of us, the journey, the destination, we become afraid. But we need to know that God is with us. God holds on to us. And in the verse that we read, uh, Isaiah forty-one verse ten, it says, "I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right." Hand. Therefore, we can be courageous because it is, it is not my courage. It is not, not my strength. It is God's strength. And we know that we are safe. We are safe. God is saying, I want to, I am committed to your spiritual growth. I am committed to your battle in the world. I'm committed to I promised it. I'm with you. My presence is with you. And also my power is with you. See, spiritual maturity is our journey. Every one of us. Every one of us. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, the journey begins. We start pedaling. We start pedaling. Spiritual maturity is living a life of following Jesus that would make our ways prosperous, it says here. 
and then you will have good success. And the prosperity and good success is not riches of the world, but is riches in Christ Jesus. It is knowing Jesus. It is glorifying Jesus. It is knowing that his, his promise is true. That his presence is real. And his power is effective. Let's go on a journey together. As Hana Church, we are all in a journey. Now, we're all separated, but still, we are all in a journey. And it is a wonderful journey. Let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord Father God, that you are committed to our spiritual growth. Just as Joshua is battling into the, in the promised land, we also battle every day. We battle against the enemy. But we know that we can overcome because you have overcome. So the battle is not ours. The battle is yours and you have already won. So it is possible when we bury the past, we bury it in Jesus' name. It's dead. My unbelief, my mistakes, my disappointment, it's dead. We expect the new because you promised the new things are coming. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful promise. And Lord Jesus, as we bury the past, we take up the challenge. We arise up, Lord Father. Because we know that you have, you are committed. So we commit ourselves also, Lord Jesus. We commit to meditate and obey your word. And through that, because through that, we know, Lord Jesus, that you hold us. That you keep us strong. So Lord Jesus, whatever has, whatever we, you got planned today, Lord. Whatever physical journey or spiritual journey that will take place today, Lord Jesus, we rise and we stand firm and we thank you, Lord Jesus. And now, may the grace of the Lord, of Lord Jesus Christ and the unconditional love of the Father and the fellowship and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit be upon all of us as we continue this journey in glorifying you from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a clap offering? Thank you for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful day. What a glorious day it is today. See you all next week.